Hey, good top of the morning to you, whosoever. This is the beginning of the book of Genesis, an introduction to the Word of God. I hope uh, you go with me verse by verse as we go through the book of Genesis. We finished the book of Revelation. Um, please like and subscribe, guys. The whole point is to have some uh, meat uh, on the bones when we hit the tribulation hours, that there's enough videos for people to hear, to learn. Uh, what the Bible does teach. I ain't trying to make no money. You can like and subscribe. Please share it. Um, I, I would like to be uh, used by the Lord. And, and I hope uh, this uh, uh, works. So why is the book of Genesis so important, guys? Because it's the foundation of the beginnings of humans. Of human life. It shows us that we weren't here first. God was here first. The angels were here first. And the fallen angels were also here first. Uh, we gave dominion, uh, you know, we give dominion to Satan when our grandparents, Adam and Eve, sinned. You know, the book of Genesis is one of two important key books in the Bible. The book that opens up the Old Testament is called the book of Genesis, mean, meaning beginnings. Uh, it also, another book is the book of Matthew, which opens up the New Testament. Uh, the two books uh, gives us understanding of who God is and what God desires for all of us, guys, before beginning the study, uh, I want you to point out that some of these studies are from Chuck Smith, from Pastor McGee, from John Corson. Uh, you take a little bit of this. And, you know, that's the way I learned. You know, you, you, you read the Bible, what the Lord speaks to you. You read the commentaries, and then you ask the Lord uh, which, which, what to speak on. You know, sometimes you're studying for the Bible, and the Lord just totally brings something for the congregation or someone that's in the congregation that needs a hearing from the Lord. Again, guys, um, the book of Genesis is a bird's eye view of the spectrum of God's Bible. You know, the Bible says uh, the book of Genesis is actually a, a germane to the entire germane to the entire Scripture. The fact of the matter is that Genesis is the book that states many things for the first time: the creation of man, uh, the woman, sin, Sabbath. Marriage, family, labor, civilization, culture, murder, sacrifice, races, languages, redemption, and cities. Uh, that's where it comes from, the book of Genesis. Um, behind me, I have Know Thy Enemy, um, how Satan uh, controls the, the hierarchy of fallen, I guess you might say, minions. You know, he moves the situation. You know, he, his main goal right now is to bring in one world government under one world leader under his son the antichrist so the book of genesis teaches us again how god was going to introduce how god introduced this coming savior through the pictures uh, through the promises of the bible you know you also find certain phrases that occur frequently for instance these are the generations of is an important expression used frequently because the book of genesis gives the families of early history. This is important to us because we are members of a human family that begins with Adam and Eve. Um, also, we learned about geographies. There is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Pharaoh, and the 11 sons of Jacob besides Joseph. You will find out that God continually blessing Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. In addition, those are associated with them. Lot, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a Salik. Potiphar, the butler, the pharaoh, also blessed of God. You know, guys, uh, uh, we we know the promises of God. We know the things of the Lord. We know the, the things of, of what God desires. Um, you know, God blesses. You know, I'm blessed. I might not have a lot of money, but I'm blessed. You know, I find these monitors, by the way, guys, at Goodwill. And I, you know, I paid 30 bucks for that one. I think I paid $30 for that one. This one I got... Um, Right here for like 120 bucks, a Vizio, 32, 32 inch. Uh, here's my old telephones. I never say, I, I, I never return, you know, the, hey, I'll give you $400 credit. I always keep my phones because I could always use them for, you know, listening to music. I use this one for the gym. Um, but, guy, but if God is for us, who can be against us, guys? This is the only one I, I paid good money on because I play my PS, you know, I play, I'm a gamer too. That's why I, I have the tattoo. Of a Nintendo right here controller, you know, but you know, use whatever God's gifts God is giving you. 
you know, for, for, for the, for the building, this, this light right here, this light over here was broken and I fixed it and I put it together. You know, I have my little baby spider man, you know, um, I have my other lights. You know, you got to do, you know, I said, I'm going to build, uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to use whatever gifts God has given me. You know, it's up to the Lord what he does, with what I do. You know, I, I could be truthful. I haven't been the best Christian in the world uh, because I struggled. Um, but at some point I came to a, a position in my life where I wanted to walk with the Lord. I wanted to put away like, drinking and, you know, all these other things that, that were, that were, you know, it, it wasn't the best put it that way and you know how God worked in the children of Israel and in the families of the genealogies of Abraham Isaac and Jacob you see that he works in your life also guys so, so you know the Word of God gives us wisdom the Word of God you know helps us it shows us we're being disobedient the Word of God shows us light when we're when we're in the mire in the muck in the pits of life you know all you got to do is cry out to God all you have to do is cry out to God, my brothers. All you have to do is, at any point, right now you're listening to a message and you think that uh, life is the horrible, cry out to God and see how it changes just like that. I know this because he's done it in my life. And I ain't no better than you or less sinning than you. You know, the book of Genesis, uh, it talks about, uh, you know, it's a prominent book. It talks about... Jealousy in the home is found here. Egypt before us uh, in our lives. You know, how judgments upon sin are mentioned here. Uh, you know, God's providence. You know, these are all things that we find in the book of Genesis. You know, we, we find that, you know, uh, as we study the Bible, we understand that, you know, God wrote it uh, to give us, you know, uh, wisdom. So we'd be smart. You know, I, I believe that uh, since I've been born again and saved since 2003 and reading my Bible and studying my Bible, that I'm smarter now than I was, uh, even though I scored a pretty high score on my military ASVAB. Um, I thought, I thought you know, close to 90 was a pretty good score. But my sin nature was, you know, taking me down to, you know, dancing in clubs and raves and, you know, just hanging out with my friends, you know, you know smoking weed or whatever. Um, but it, it's funny how, how, how God comes into our lives and things just change, you know? One of the main reasons of, of the book of Genesis is to get an overview of, of what God is doing. It's God's reading manual, his textbook, you know, in, in the Bible, there's articles concerning uh, you know the, the the tribe of Ishtar, the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of you know so and so, the tribe of Judah. You know, in the Bible, there's books of devotion, books of criticism, books about other parts of the Bible. The best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. You know, you know, there's four different versions of the gospel. You know, Matthew, Luke, John, and uh, Matthew, Luke, John, Mark, and you know different you know there's ones to the jews there's one to the gentiles there's one to the, from the church to the church so we know it's as we get into the bible you know we are tempted to say you know ah it's an adequated book but it's not if god wrote it who's outside of time it's never going to be outdated let's put it that way because god is outside of time he wrote it he knows what he's talking about and he's trying to give us warning uh, concerning you know these are in the book of genesis you see uh, you know how Noah had Seth, had uh, Ham and Jephthah, and then Cush, and then Cush had Nimrod. Remember Nimrod, uh, his descendant became what we worship today is Christmas. You know you learn that in the book of Genesis. Uh, so this is the, know thy enemy. It talks about how the descendants of Cush through Abraham. Um, Nimrod built an altar and, and he wanted the, the worship of people. You know, that, that is the beginning of Mystery Babylon. Uh, we learned this in the book of Genesis. You know, we've, we noticed that like Satan, he wants to deceive the world. You know, put a person uh, uh, who just a normal man is God. You know, the, the Pope is no, no, no better than me. But, I, but he does hold a higher position. And I hope he gets saved if he's not saved. And he preaches the everlasting gospel. That he t t t 
tells people about you know what's coming the the, the, the book of revelation the two witnesses um the beast of revelation you know who knows uh, but we know that we all find this in the book in the bible in the book of genesis we learned about uh, the major divisions in the book we learned about uh again creation we learned about uh, how god uh, created man um, out of the dust of the ground you know abraham a man of faith isaac the beloved son jacob the chosen and cha chastened son and joseph his suffering and glory although that there are major divisions in the book of genesis there's many chapters in the bible talking about the promises of god toward all of us you know you know the chances are uh, that if we read the bible we'll be smarter wiser stronger you know you won't be deceived by by the, the 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 traditions of man you know when was the last time you read the bible you know it talks about where the the the, the humans started you know in iraq uh, the garden of eden and then went they went this way and then this happened and then this happened and, and you know archaeologists have found out that there was a great flood you know god puts much emphasis in us reading the bible the purpose is definite to grow in the things of the Lord. You know, uh, how God formed tribes that later became nations, who later became, you know, uh, clans, and, 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 you know, God of the universe knows what he's doing. You know, God is more interested in Abraham than he was in the entire created universe. And Pastor McGee says, God is more interested in you and attaches more value to you than he does to the entire physical universe. Pastor Dylan used to tell us that God will move heaven and earth to put you where God has called you to be, in whatever God, capacity God has called you to to read. Uh, remember, God put it in the heart of Caesar to make a, a to 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 make a, a taxation where everybody would go to their you know place of origin and give a tax, um, and so God moved the whole heaven and earth that uh, Mary and Joseph would move to Bethlehem and have the baby exactly where Jesus that God predicted that. The Messiah would come from Bethlehem. So we know that the gospel is the good news. You know, and it's, it is the 30 years of Jesus. It is the begin. the book of the Bible and the book of Genesis is the beginning of the earth. Um, the, the Bible talks about a very, very strong emphasis of being born again and having the Holy Spirit guide you in these, uh, in this fallen world. You know, there's you know, there's many chapters in the Bible where God wants us to to not be deceived, to not to not be dismayed, do not be uh, you know, don't ever give up, you know. But we know this about the 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 book of Genesis. Okay, it's a seed plot of the Bible. Here we will find the beginning, the source of the birth of everything. The book of Genesis is just like the bud of a beautiful rose, and it opens up into the rest of the Bible. The truth here is a germ form. One of the best divisions that which can be made in the book of Genesis is according to the genealogies and according to the families. We know in Genesis chapter 1 through 2, we talk about the generations of heaven and earth. And in and, and Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 7, we, we talk about the book of generations of Adam, of Noah, the sons of Noah, the sons of Shem, the sons of Terah, the generations of Ishmael, the generations of Isaac, the generations of Esau, the generations of Jacob. All these are given to us in the book of Genesis. It is a book of families. Genesis is an amazing book if you understand the viewpoint of the Bible. And as we grow in the knowledge of the Word, we start seeing that God has um, created. Uh, so let's get into the first ch chapter 1. Of verse 1 it says this is the most profound statement ever made in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth what does that mean that he created everything that is living I think that this verse is is all we have of actual creation with the exception as we see in the creation of man and animals later on in the book of Genesis but this is the creation story and Pastor McGee says, I admit that is a very brief story indeed. An incident was told to Paul Bellamy, the late editor of the Cleveland Plain Dealer. 
that while he was making the rounds of the reporter's desks one night, he noticed one of the men grinding out a tapeworm. On what Bellamy regarded as a relatively unimportant event, cut it down, he said. After all, the story of the creation was told in Genesis in 282 words. The reporter shot back, yes, and I've always thought we have been saved a lot of arguments later if someone had just written another couple hundred. It is interesting to note that God has certainly given us the abrogated edition. The question arises, what did he have in mind when he gave us a particular section? What was the author's purpose here? Was it his purpose to teach genealogy? There's a great deal of argument and disagreement on the particular juncture. Some time ago here in California, the State Board of Education voted to include a biblical so-called theory of creation in science books. Now, frankly, I'm not sure that I am happy about that. Somehow, will say that I ought to be because it is a step in the right direction. My friends, I'll tell you why I'm not happy. My concern is re relative to the character of the teachers who teach it. We don't have enough teachers with the born-again uh, Christian background and the Bible background to be able to teach it properly. A few, a few of the public school teachers are prepared really to teach the story of creation and take six months when God took 282 words. So, Again, guys, we understand that God created the heaven and the earth. You know, God uh, says that uh, there's no such thing as evolution. Um, there's no such thing as the Big Bang unless unless it was God who made it. So uh, understand that uh, the Bible here reconciles science and the Bible. You know, they look with disdain upon the great truths of the Bible. Many uh, scientists. But the Bible says here that the foundations were written and, and, and made out of nothing by God. You know, we, uh, we understand that, that God wants us to, uh, to understand what the Bible teaches. That God created the heaven and earth. God created you. God created the universe. God created time. God created uh, all things for a purpose, for His purpose. He has the final say in all things. You know, he has the title deed of creation. He has the title deed of the earth. He's the one at the end of the tribulation hour. After the millennium reign, if you fail to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will find before the greatest investigation in human history. It is called the white throne judgment where everybody is found guilty. Because they never trusted in the blood of the Lamb. They never trusted in the Word of God. They never read the Bible. They never read the book of Genesis. They never realized that... God, man was made sinless until they sinned and gave dominion over to Satan. <laughs> the point of the Bible is, again, to show us our beginnings, our origins, what God wants us to do, what God desire us to do. You know, what, what exactly do you want? You know, what exactly do you need? You know, God, which is all around us today, the great thing you can do as a human being is to be publicly chose the Lord Jesus Christ and give a public confession before the world. To believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and receive his Son, Jesus Christ, is the most glorious privilege that you and I have. We hear a lot of people talk about freedom of speech and the freedom of every sort. You know, freedom to you know, marry a man, another man, freedom to do this, freedom to do that, but the greatest thing we could ever do is to have the testimony of the living God, the creator of the heaven and earth, the, the person dwelling, the part of the Godhead do, living in a, in, in a born-again Christian. You know, we hear a lot of talk about freedom of speech, but we should really talk about the freedom that we have in Christ. You know, being born again and having the, the blood atonement, of, uh, the blood of the Lamb is the greatest gift we all have, and the grace we have every day is everlasting. It renews every day, guys, because we blow it every day, whether it be our attitude or whatever. But here we go to, again to the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is a majestic verse, by the way, guys. It is a tremendous verse. I am the opinion that it is the doorway through which we have to walk into the Bible. We have to believe that God is the creator, for he is that cometh to God must first believe that he is. And the beginning 
of God created the heavens and the earth. And his reward is with him, God. God created the words create from the Hebrew word bara, which means create out of nothing. The word is used only three times in the first chapter of Genesis because it records the three acts of creation. One, the creation of man. The creation of, of the universe and the creations of the world and the creations of the animal life. You know, uh, not in that order, but God created, guys. God's marking off the creative days with words. And the evening and the morning was the first day. Makes it clear that we are, he was not referring to long periods of time, but to actual 24-hour days. You know, people say, oh, God, the world was made in billions and billions of years. God's word says that, that he makes a point to say that the first day and the evening and the morning were the first day. That's how quickly God made it. So if God created the heavens and the earth and the world and everything around us that quickly, guys, don't you think he could change your circumstances like that? He's done it in my life, God. He's done it many times in all of our lives and all are born again cre creators and creations. All these, you know, you know, God is the greatest. He, his love for you guys is the best, you know. Uh, but we know that God is able to do abundantly more than we ask and think, guys. This is the great things of uh, knowing the Bible. You know, God created everything so quickly, no mistakes. And he desires to, to when God chose you to be born again and chose you to come into faith and chose you to be his son, he did not make a mistake. Even though we sometimes we think in our lives, oh, you know, we're a big mistake. I, I you know, I've been listening to some music and I remember the feelings I was listening and I was just so down in life and you know I just felt so much remorse because of this wrong decisions guys you know doing drugs and hanging out with the wrong people doesn't really always add up to a lot oh by the way guys the queen of heaven that's Samaramis right uh, there Samaramis she was the queen of heaven in the book of Genesis by the way guys and God God said that was evil you know, so the Queen of Heaven today is the same. It's the same principality that was uh, that happened with uh, Mystery Babylon, the Harlot Church. You know, where they built they built these cities and they, they would bring offerings to Nimrod, and then and then she would have her priests. You know, kind of today how the the Catholic Church. I believe the Spirit of God is still in the Catholic Church, but it's been in 1956 they gave the church to Mary. Not lying, and, and then they they had the doctrine of the you know the glorification the assumption of Mary, which is which is probably less than seventy five years old, but before that the Catholic Church used to preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified, you know, in the last seventy five years they turned away and they started worshiping the creation rather than the Creator, meaning the sun and the moon, you know. You know, Satan said, I said in my heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars, and I will be enthroned. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds, and I will make myself like the Most High. That's what the, the sacred mountain. Satan made himself be, to be worshipped in the sun and the moon above the stars. It's true. But God said, you have sinned, therefore, and I cast you as a profane thing out to the mountain of God. You know, there's a power structure right now happening before Satan and his fallen angels and God, his angels, and and Michael the archangel and the children of Israel. These are, these are real things that are happening behind the scenes, guys. And, and unless you read the book of Genesis, you have to understand that, you know, uh, there's a spiritual battle for the, for the souls of men. There's a spiritual battle for your soul. You know, even if you are born again, Satan's going to try to trip you up, pull you in, but never go back. As a dog returns to the vomit, so does a fool that returns to his folly, guys. Many times I return back to vomit, guys. But God was always faithful to convict me in the middle of the night. We can't sleep. You know, you'll be convicted by the Lord, and the Lord would just speak to your heart. And you know, you know, I have so much more for you, Tony. Why are you? doing this and doing that and he's like oh, oh, oh 
you know, your conscience, you might call it your conscience, but it is the Holy Spirit of God getting you alone uh, uh, in your bed and speaking to your heart, you know. God does that because he loves you and he wants to have a, a, a relationship with you. So, again, guys, I, I, I got to go. Uh, may the Lord bless you. Be girded, be strengthened. The Lord is coming. He's coming quickly. Uh, remember, God created heaven and earth. He created a new heart within me when I was born again. Uh, he, he turned that heart of stone into the heart of flesh. And he gave me wisdom and continues to give me wisdom. And I said, you know, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm sure God can do anything he wants to do and change the circumstances like that because he made the world in one day guys he made the creation in one day heaven you know you know i don't need our help to say oh well you know he meant uh, one day but he really was thousands and thousands of years ago but god says the evening and night were the first day 24 hour period nimrod the real the real god people worship on christmas guys look it up when is nimrod's birthday he was the sun god, who later became Baal in the Bible. Right there. The sun god. He became Baal in the Bible. And his wife became, her name was Samaramis, and she became the queen of heaven. So the sun and the moon come together. Um, you know, And they had a child. And that child's name was Tamos, who, who, who she used to have a 40-day fast or Lent for uh, the resurrection of of Tamas, which is today's modern day Easter, guys, the spring equinox, and you learn this, you know, know thy enemy on YouTube, know thy enemy. It's ten hours long, but you learn the foundations of the Bible, you know, the foundations of uh, worshiping false Christs, of the traditions of men. Traditions of men go way past the church. It goes back to uh, Nimrod, and even goes back to the Book of Genesis. You know, remember they said, that, let us build ourselves a city and a tower that reaches onto the heavens. You know, today's modern Babylon is uh, the Vatican, which is going to be destroyed in the tribulation hour by the false false beast and the false prophet. The false, <laughs> they're both false, uh, but they're going to really be the, the, the authorities from Satan. And again, guys, uh, there's nothing ahead of us that's going to be good. Remember, guys, like I keep telling my, my cousins, you know, we're all on the Titanic, and no matter how much money you make in this world, all we are doing is rearranging the the chairs on the Titanic. You know, we're, it's whatever's coming is going to come upon the whole world. We're heading into the end times. The beast of Revelation is going to be worshipped, and all those whose names were not written in the Lamb's Book of Life worship the beast. So if you find yourself worshiping the beast, it's because your names were not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You were disobedient, children of disobedience, and you know. And I feel sorry for you guys. You could be chilling and kicking it with the, with the homies, all us born again believers, Christians, be you know in the presence of God, you know, not Lucifer and his all seeing eye and his you know mentiroso. He's a liar. He's the father of lies, and he lies to you. You know, uh, this message is to tell you that I'm not trying to lie to you. I'm just trying to tell you again that there's so much more for you than than money and power and a nice car and a nice house and a nice wife. And a nice bank account. You know, all that's gonna go by the wayside the closer we get to the end times. And we are heading close, guys, because I believe Barack Obama is gonna be the beast of revelation. Um, the false prophet, mm, Rick Warren, I think. Um, I got a, I got ABGBs uh, when I used to go to Green Valley Church and I used to watch uh, his all his you know all his quotes on all the walls. I'm all shit I'm all damn I almost said a bad word. You know, this guy has more this guy has more quotes on the walls than Jesus, you know. And I said, "Well, something's wrong." And then I, you know, I read the Purpose Driven Life, and I was being convicted. I'm just like, "Why am I being convicted?" And then the Lord spoke to me. Where's the word sin in the whole book? And I looked for it; it wasn't there. I'm going to find the word born again, not there. Find the word of the the Holy Spirit, you know. Uh, put it in the right context, you know. And then he was a uh, he was the pastor for Barack Obama. And he prayed at the end of the prayer inauguration. He prayed in the name of, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Esau, in the name of Yeshua. The three world religions that are coming together in the end days. I'm telling you guys, we're heading into the end times. I still have, I still have hope for the Pope. 
I hope he gets saved. And I hope he uses his millions of millions of millions of dollars to help a poor man like me uh, get, uh, you know, get uh, sponsored uh, to give the gospel and to reach the lost and to bring salvation in the word of God to those in darkness. Um, so may the Lord bless you. Never go back. Never go back, guys. I got 17 months uh, on the 5th without drinking. God bless you. That's 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 more than I've had in 20 years. Uh, you know, it's, I'm in the old school. Uh, you have a beer when you eat. You know, you have, have a couple beers when you get off of work. You know, and uh, not no more. I, I don't miss it at all because I want I want God to be able to use me, and guide me, and protect me. Because you, you you open up the doors to other things uh, when you're drinking and hanging out with the buddies. You know. And it's kind of funny how you stop drinking and no one really hangs out with you anymore. So, may the Lord bless you. Be good and be strengthened. The Lord is coming. He's coming quickly. Uh, never go back. Never go back. Blessed is, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You know, guys, abide in Christ and you'll get strong.